What's good? What's good? We're going to call this one first day in, first day in, where it's real in the field and hard on the yard. Normally, I try to jump into the story and, and basically go, go into the meat and the heart of the story. But for this one, I got to stroll back in time to the beginning of it to make the whole story make sense, to let you know exactly where I was coming from, what I felt, like how I saw things. So I was young. My parents was basically, they wanted to switch it up. We was living in the South Bay. They, they wanted to make another move. So we, we set out, we was looking for a new place to live. And pretty much anywhere in Northern California was the area that we could, um, we could move to. Basically my dad could transfer pretty much any location, say Fresno, to really the Oregon border but we was looking and we started in like Fresno we hit up a couple other places in the Central Valley we we went to Sacramento we was outside of Sacramento in the foothills and it was fun it was basically like a bunch of mini vacations so on the weekend we go out of town me my sister mom and dad at the time it was just us you know eat and talk with with realtors talk with people in the local area they would let us know this area is good these got good schools you don't want to stay here this is going on over there so on and so forth but it was a lot of uh exploring so to say so it, it was it was a good time especially when you're young you you getting out seeing new things new people new places with the families and just enjoying ourselves I remember in the, the Fresno area, people was like, oh, you don't want to go to this certain place. The people there is a certain kind of way. We went to different locations in Fresno. I wasn't really feeling it too much. If I, if I recall correctly, it was, it was out the way. And it, the, the spots we was looking at just wasn't cool. Now, Fresno is a nice place, nice city, but just at the time, the locations we was looking at and, and some of the things that the people were saying just just wasn't with me at least I wasn't too pumped up about it Sacramento was probably out of all of them that I liked the most but it was South Sacramento this was the hood and this was the mid 80s so there was a lot of action on the, on the block it was a nice house had kids outside on bikes I saw action that's all I saw parents wasn't really feeling it there was a little too much action on the block a lot of moving and shaking mid 80s right so we went to the uh the north bay and uh south of santa rosa my parents fell in love with it it was kind of like goldilocks uh, the, looking for the porridge in the bed too hot too cold too hard too soft when we got to the santa rosa area in the north bay and they was like okay we like this um found a place that was close to a school People in the area was saying the school, the school was good, the, the, the school district was good, had a lot of nice things to say about it. So, boom, we're going to make that move. So, we're going to fast forward. We make the move. First day. Get in there. I believe my mom took me to school. So, me, my sister's two years younger than me. For some reason, I don't remember her being in the office at the time, but this is so old. A lot of this stuff, I'm taking artistic liberties, fill it in the blanks. But a lot of the story I know verbatim, because A, I'd have told it before, and B, is you, you can't forget a day like this. This was a classic day off the chain. But so we in the office, me, my mom, meet the people in the office like the secretary nurse so on and so forth sit down with the principal he given the rundown on on the school the rules and regulations how things are how things aren't how they're gonna be how they're not gonna be for some reason in my mind i i remember him reading my file which should have been good like looking at it he was kind of say, saying a couple things and i kind of remember like like yeah basically i'm a good person here to learn basically it right he might have asked me my interests 
things like that. Like, what do you like? And I, I believe I told him football, sports, and he might have mentioned like different people play sports at the school. And I could be just adding this in there, but this definitely happened. So the next part for sure happened. So we go to the class, the classroom, and the teacher introduces me to the students. So we get time to to mingle. I remember and the kids is talking, saying things that they do, that they like. There were some people like basketball, some people like football, played on the football league. Some people play CYO, a lot of baseball. Different people like different things. And I was, I'm liking this because I liked all the things they talking about sports. Like that was right up my alley. That was really what was going on at the time. We had Nintendo and that was about in sports. That was it, really sports. So I'm hearing football, basketball, baseball. I'm like, okay, I'm going, uh, I can do this. I like this. The people so far so good. They chill. They seem cool, seem nice. You, I'm, I, I could grow to like this. Naturally, uh, I'm nervous, you know, apprehensive type thing. I kind of put up a fight when we were supposed to be, I put up a fight, but a little protest. Like, oh, I want to stay in the South Bay. You guys move. Let me stay here with my, you know, my cousins. Pops wasn't having that. But I get there. Naturally, something new, something different. But I was like, okay, I like this. Change is hard. It's scary. It's nerve-wracking. Could be. But, like, just meeting the kids initially kind of eased my mind, put me at ease, so to say. So... I believe it was the, the, the first recess we get out there and the game of the day was three flies up. So essentially you throw the ball up, you catch it three times and, and you become a quarterback. So point of the, the game is to catch the ball. Throw the ball up. We playing. Naturally, like I say, I'm nervous. Trying to make a good first impression. impression. People as mentioned, they're athletic. They like sports. So I want to prove myself to be athletic, to to be able to play sports, right? To get picked on the teams and, and stuff like that. So I might have been a little aggressive with it. They throw the ball up, kid goes up and gets the ball. We, we more or less going up to get the ball at the same time. I'll honestly say he had the ball in the air. I kind of went up there and pulled it away from him aggressively, like grabbed it. I got one, one for me. Next thing you know, he just, I wouldn't say he like in a fighting stance or nothing like that, but he said F you with the hard R. And this happened so long ago. There's so many, it's hard to say my emotions, what I felt at the time, but I, I, I know the general feeling of what I was feeling because I, I didn't told it before and so I'm getting into it with the guy we going back and forth a little pushing shoving but I'm not really trying to fight this guy just got from the principal's office with my mom looking the principal in his eye telling him in his eyes telling him I'm here for an education I'm here to play sports I'm gonna be a good student no problems out of me. Show me to the classroom. Let me get up out of this office, right? So I'm not trying to go back to the office. I was literally there an hour previous. So I'm in a tough spot. With three flies up, there's a, a big group of people standing in one spot trying to get the ball. So when he said this, it wasn't like it was just me and him that heard this. So I've been disrespected in front of a lot of people right so I'm between a rock and a hard place as far as the the word I've been educated I had been educated on it I read it in the Webster's dictionary I've been schooled on how to respond how to react how not to respond how not to react so that alone wasn't really moving me to to just hit the kid to fight him or anything like that not on the first day H had he followed it up with the f you i'm gonna do this this and that it might have been something different i might have felt differently but he was 
F you. And I understood why he said it, because I took the ball. There's no, I'm not disputing that that happened. I mean, people seen it, but it's part of the game, right? It, until you come down with it, once you come down and you possess it, you have possession. In the air, it's a 50-50 ball, basically. And possession is, what, nine-tenths of the law? This is 100% in this game, right? So 100% in my mind thought I had it. The, 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 the crowd also thought, I can't th say what they thought, but they didn't think that what was said was warranted. So me and the, the, the dude is kind of going back and forth. Somebody younger than me, and you have to do, I know all these people, but at the time I did, right? So I know who this is that went and told. Somebody said, comes up to me and was like, oh, you need to talk, tell so-and-so. He's the yard, I forgot exactly how he said it, but he said he's the yard representative of the minorities for the playground. I'm tripping. I'm like... Well, yard representative in the, my previous school there's older people we would go to if there was a problem they would kind of work it out and stuff or if other kids was was picking on us or, or bullying or ganging up or whatever the scenario may be we would talk to so and so and so so there's one person in particular I'm thinking of this was in the South Bay but it definitely wasn't a minority thing or race based so I'm tripping have to rewind so before we move up there there had already been jokes like different people like you go into the sticks it's it's way out the way it's country maybe saying even oh people up there might be racist or, or something and this is all kinds of people maybe white people even saying this but at the same time just joking and joshing like trying to make a person feel bad right you leave it they don't they don't want you to go naturally life goes on so saying uh oh, it's different up there i but at the same time there was a lot of good reviews and i would tell people that and i would tell my great grandparents like they said this and that and my great grandparents was from mississippi they used to actually go to the area we was moving to when they lived in san francisco to get poultry and eggs i mean they're known they have a butter and eggs parade they would get like chicken and, and meat and stuff and go back to the city with it. And they was like, nah, these, they just talking. These, they don't know what they're talking about, right? So even if they, they, they kidding or, or just joking and cutting up, right? Like what the joke came true. <laughs> I'm like, wow, what have I got into? Like he didn't call me this. There's a minority representative. This is, this is off the chain. And I'm just kind of just stuck into it. Like, I don't really know what to do. I feel a certain kind of way. I'm disrespected, but at the same time, it's not moving me. I'm not letting it move me off my square. We didn't drove from all over Northern, all over California, Central California, uh, Northern California, back and forth for months. I know what my parents went through to get us up there, how hard they worked. I had my little sister in the school uh, with me another thing before i enrolled in the school they had said the school is full we want them to go to another school so this the city is uh was section is sectioned off in different sections so we were living essentially a couple hundred yards away from the school and they wanted me to, us to go to a school a couple neighborhoods over Local people was like, nah, you don't want to do that. The school they telling you to go to is not better, a better school. You want to go to the, the local school in the neighborhood. So somehow, some way it gets worked out. We're in the local school. So this is all kicking through my mind right now before I, I go any further with this guy. Like I barely, I just got here. I don't know none of these people. I don't know what time they on. I didn't already heard claims of racism, even if the people were joking when they said it. Barely in the school. I'm not trying to get suspended, expelled. I'm looking at the horizon. I'm seeing suspension and or expulsion on the horizon. So uh, 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 a kid that was younger than me, he, he runs over and tells the minority shot caller. And I see him giving a, a blow by blow. He did this. 
he said this, he pushed him, he it basically let him know, like, this is where we're at with it. And I remember I'm tripping at the time because I'm, like, not trying to get anybody else involved. Like, really, I was trying to let the dude skate. I wanted, we was going to do the pushing and the shoving. He, he wasn't throwing no punches. I really wasn't worried what he said. I wasn't, I wasn't. Because he said it in front of a bunch of people. And there's people who were hurt, who heard it, who wasn't me, right? So it's like, man, not only he disrespected me, he disrespected some other people. Now, had I known these people, it would have played out totally different. But first day, first recess, I'm tripping. So the minority representative comes over and he asked me, what's going on? Because he doesn't know me from a can of paint. So he wants to know, how is it that this guy he knows came to say this? To him, it may have been out of the ordinary. So I let him know. But I'm being real vague. I'm not trying to tell, talk to this guy or tell him exactly what happened, what was said. But he already heard the story. So it was kind of pointless in me repeating it. So I, I, I tell him, like, this is what happened. And he's like trying to think so it becomes like a we thing and he's he's sort of preaching like we can't tolerate this level of disrespect something has to be done about this and i'm i'm, I'm with him however it's gonna play out i'm with it if, if a fight has to happen if it don't I'm trying not to get into the principal's office and I'm expressing this to him. I was like, I just got here. I just got out of the office. My mom just dropped me off. The last thing I'm trying to do is go back in there and get thrown out. He felt me. So the next thing you know, the we're going to call him the Woods. We're going to call him the Woods shot caller comes up. So he ran the, the yard for the Woods. So in this story, there, I'm a, there's two... I'm, Two different classification. There's going to be the Woods and the White Boys. Kid I got into it with, I'm going to classify him as a White Boy. Regular kid going to school, getting his education on, trying to learn, doing his thing, right? But the Woods was a little, I wouldn't say a different breed, but just just a different makeup, how they carried it. I mean, at BMX bikes, maybe stolen bikes. Uh, cigarettes, trees, like they'd have an Iron Maiden t shirts. That's just how they carried it. And I've found out these dudes was cool. This is just the instance uh, how I met these guys. So we got the minority shot caller, we got the, the woods who runs the yards for the woods and the whites, we got me, and we got the, the, the dude who I got into it with. So the 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 wood the wood shot caller and the minority shot caller started politicking back and forth. They, the wood shot caller wants to know exactly what happened. And they give him the rundown. So they are both like, "Well, what are we gonna do about it?" I'm trying to get out of it because I'm expressing like, "Look, this is a bad time for me. I just got here." not trying to get thrown out so the wood shot caller and i could say how i remember it he he wasn't taken up for the guy when he heard the story because in the game you could grab the ball i mean this is how the game goes it it happened plenty of times after that people took the ball from me people take the ball from everybody it's just how the game goes and I mean, they heard what happened, so I can't say they was co-signing it. It's not like they was like, oh, yeah, this guy could just call this guy anything he wants, and we're going to be good with it and ride with him. They really wasn't feeling it, but it was kind of like he was the representation, so he had to be there to represent his his side of the yard, which he had basically split and divided. So, And I'll explain that a little bit further. So where the wood shot caller comes in, he was like, well, all right, you guys got to throw the first punch. So now we are automatically into the first punch. I'm trying to get it uh, postponed till, till after school, moved off campus. 
something different besides us getting into it right there right right here right now in front of the the, the teachers the yard duties the principal and everybody i just know this ain't gonna play out good right so the minority shot caller he he, he like my union representative he was a <laughs> He was like, nah, my guy was wrong, you know, like he's new here, he just showed up, he didn't do anything, he, he's playing the game like it's supposed to be played, he's not throwing the first punch, and I, and I kind of was expressed to both of them, I was like, I need leverage, like if we gonna fight, if I go to the office, I need to be able to say, like, I did not throw the first punch and I was defending myself so I don't get expelled. And they felt it. And the wood shot caller was basically was like, you know, that makes sense. That's how we're going to do it. The, the other guy's going to throw the first punch. So other kids was kind of trying to help me out. Like, oh, we could do it over here. We could do it later. We could do it. And I was like, yeah, let's go with they plan, right? Because now the, these these older two boys, they, they two two grades older i don't know how many years older has basically came between put between themselves they negotiated that i'm about to fight this other dude so i'm telling the minority representative i was like these other guys talking about we could do it over here later on so on and so forth and he, he kind of grows tired of uh all my excuses <laughs> Uh, he did a, he, he did a cold one. And at the end of the day, I mean, he did a solid one for me because sometimes you, you have to do what you got to do when you got to do it. Right. <sighs> Crashing out ain't a good thing, but how it was done, where it was done in front of who it was done. Like there was a lot of kids that he hurt. I can say hurt, but they hurt it. Right. And so they hear this word. It's like, not only you saying that to, to me, it's like, well, what does this guy think about me, right? So the minority shot caller, Hispanic dude, I mean, if somebody who grew up with me, like, I mean, everybody at the school who was there knows who, who it is, but it's a town, it, but they don't know his, the A.A. Anuel it would be the initials. In the, uh, in the wood shot collar, we have to share a same name. So the minority shot collar was like, cut the shit. He was like, look, either you're going to fight this dude right now or you're going to fight me. So what's it going to be? So now I got options. First day, first recess. It's either I'm fighting right here, right now for the heavyweight title of the school or... I'm fighting this junior flyweight over there. And the dude, uh, the dude who I gotten into it with originally, he's a lot smaller than me at the time. He's probably bigger than me, height, stature, stuff like that today. But at this time, I wouldn't say I was towering over him, but, and I'm not saying like, just because he was, I'm bigger, he, he was smaller, I'm going to do this. Nah, it was just like, I'm looking up at this this other dude got height, size, age, speed, strength, and I'm looking at this other guy. So it's like, man, it's not really even a choice, okay? It's like we fight in the junior flyweight who said what he said, right? I'm not trying to do it, but man. So now I got a whole nother dilemma. So he gonna throw the first punch. We gotta do this. Now we got the everybody heard it when it first happened say there was a handful of people but naturally you know the more uh, things go on the more people flock to something so everybody's standing around now it was like man nice to meet you i don't only only met the kids in my grade in my class so not even if there was two classes of us in that grade i don't even know if i had met the other class i believe i just met half of the kids who I would graduate with right in a couple years I ain't met the older kids and like we all meeting right here right now and they're probably tripping like who's this guy and what's going on and why is he fighting this guy <laughs> it was the craziest introduction like ah oh, nice to meet you I'm over here warming up stretching like man I'm like and, and just I, the things the stories you hear it's like I'm not trying to get into it. How about 
I'm not trying to get thrown. I'm not trying to hurt this. I, I don't know any of these people. I don't know the town. This dude could be related to the sheriff, the judge. I could be under the jail. I don't know which way this is going, man. So I'm like, man, I got to fight hard enough not to fight the shot caller, the minority shot caller, or the wood shot caller. I don't know how this is going to go. If the crowd going to jump in or we just it's going to be a melee. I have no clue of what's about to happen here. So this is the, the least interesting part of the story is the fight. So boom, I, he throws the first punch. I remember how it kicks off, but I remember it, hit, it got on the ground. And it was like an old Western tussle, which was good because there's not much damage was being done. It was flipping over, flipping over. He top position, top position, just killing time, making it look good. And at the same time, I can't speak for the other guy. At, at what he was thinking at that this moment in time but I, I'm pretty sure he didn't want to fight either he expressed I don't remember what he said but I know he wasn't really because in the back and forth he could have just we could have just went at it and he wasn't really trying to right it was his other cats the shot callers was basically like look we're gonna have to settle this right here right now so we tussling just a, a lot of nothing some short body shots on the ground, maybe some hair pulling, just, I mean, it was pathetic to be all honest with you, but it was good enough to, to give the, give them what they wanted. Like, okay, we went out there, we, 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 we threw hands, like we just wasn't going to let this slide. So it gets broken up. And just like how somebody ran and told the, the, the shot caller, what had happened like they was telling you know the teachers the teachers was probably tripping like who is this guy and why is he out who's this kid and why is he out there fighting they have they don't know who i am i had gotten there you know it was like the middle of the week or something in the middle of the day right they never see laid eyes on me they just see man talk about first impressions i'm pr uh, pretty laid back shy you know not trying to just be all the way out there on front street make myself known not immediately at least i like to scope out the the lay of the land see who is who and what is what but here i am probably got dirt and sand in my hair and straw and grass man so the kid went and and told they were already telling the teacher like and the principal i don't know if the principal was there yet telling the, the yard duty teacher like he had to do it he was, he was forced to do it and so that was helping me because the less i said the better right because i'm just trying to move this along like like not getting the details what happened oh, i don't i don't know just like man next thing we, we came to blows and we wasn't really trying to fight it was just a misunderstanding nice to meet you type thing you know like like it's hard to explain it there's nothing too much you could say like a misunderstanding like what you talking about you look pretty rough for for a friendly debate like what was y'all debating with y'all fist so I, I don't remember i didn't get suspended i don't believe but i don't know if they had somebody had told me before the fight had started or after this i believe it was after because I'm tripping about like what's going on, why we have uh, the whites and the minorities. Well, come to find out, is these two guys, they were, they was the older dudes. Basically, I got into it. It was a personal beef. So like in life, it wasn't my first day. I'm thinking I didn't jump into like a racial situation. I'm going to have to fight and, and defend myself and do this every day. And... <laughs> This is nothing like that. This was basically two people who had a dispute, more or less, and they friends and stuff. Like, just a handful of people. And they called it a, a basically upon themselves to divide everybody. Like, you coming with me, and the other guys are like, you are going to be on my side, and this is how we're going to do it. we splitting it up by, by minorities and, and whites. So, I kind of, like landed in a powder keg and I, I, I in a way i was the spark to set it off because these the the shot callers hadn't fought but it was kind of brewing up that they was they was on their way to a collision 
the dude I got into a fight with, like, we was never close after that. We was cool. We used to kick it at school, say what's up, like, but we was never buddy, buddy. It was, I can honestly say for a little bit, I wasn't feeling him, but it was on a fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, right? So I wasn't trying to get fooled a second time, but I never held it against him. I never thought he was racist. Some people who said he was and so, and was like, ah, oh. my stance was, was, he was frustrated. He, he got the ball taken from him in front of people. This guy just showed up. I wouldn't say I punked him, but somebody snatches something from you in front of everybody. He just was emotional about it and he said what he said and we were where we were. So, but I know he tells this story because he didn't tell me the story. We didn't talk about it. And whenever he tells the story, it always starts at when the fight starts. He, he'll say, we got into a fight and it was a tie. And I, I'll be like, how, the, how did it happen? He, and he just jumps into the fight. He was like, yeah, the fight was, was weak. It was a lot of this and that. There was, there was no clear winner. I'll give him that. There was no clear winner. I was not trying to win. That's what I always... Uh, he knows this too because he heard the story before we got into a fight when we stand in there with the shot callers me and him and the crowd around us I'm even looking at him expressing like basically F him but at the same time I just got out of the principal's office I barely got into this school I don't know where I'm at I don't, I'm not trying to get kicked out and, and we just got up here got the place man it's all bad he knows this. And I know he'd be sitting around Thanksgiving, campfires. And he, has a, he used to have a smirk when he would tell me the stories to kill me. I mean, he knows my family. Y'all know his. It's like, yeah. I don't know ill will. It was little kids. But it, that was my first day. It was like, man, I'm here to get my education. This is what I was telling the, the principal. I like sports. <laughs> this is my little biography I was giving him. And I got a lesson that day. It was get down or lay down because that was pretty much it. But I didn't want to be moved off my square. I don't want to be tricked out of a, you know, a position in life. But at the same time, you, you got you got to stand your ground sometimes. You can't certain things you can't tolerate because if if other people hear it, they see it, they think it's okay to do. And then they'll be doing it to the next guy too. Like they may, oh, don't do it to him, but that other kid over there, and that girl over there, whoever, right? It's like, it just, it just kind of keeps brewing and brewing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it was like, you don't want to have to go to, go to blows or violence, but sometimes it is what it is. And I was trying to push a line, but I wasn't really pushing the line without really fighting the guy. It's like, how am I going to express that? Like, man, like, this just ain't going to happen anymore without actually going to that point, you know? And, like I say, I landed in a powder keg, and I might have been the spark to, to get things going. So, about a week later, uh... The wood, we'll call him a wood general. He, he wasn't the shot caller, but he was a general. So he was he was standing next to to the uh, shot caller when all the negotiation was going down. I remember him specifically being right there. So he he he, he was uh, he got into it with the white boy about a week later in the creek. So we going off to this this creek. There's a school. There's a field. That you go through a fence. There's a couple of houses on the other side. There's a creek system. So we go back there, and while we walking back there, I'm like, "Where are we going? Oh, we going to the creek." And then the kids are like, "Yeah, we go back there and hang out, fight, do ride bikes." I was like, "Do what?" Yeah, if, we, if somebody wants to fight, we can just fight in the creek. I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, "I know this dude does not have me fight." right here in front street in front of everybody but i understand why he did it right because he was like look this can't wait right this has to be happening immediately this has to happen 
like we can't wait till 3 30 i'm like man there's a creek system this dude had me get into it <laughs> i was like like ah oh, they trying to get me rolled the shipped out of here i'm like man but the the it was about a week after that so there was maybe two weeks that the shot collars bumped heads but i mean i thank god for for delivering me there or, or helping us make our way to the school um, all kinds of different kids with uh, different experiences different backgrounds different ethnicities like different goals in life different different likes and interests and it, it was I mean it was just a great great bunch of people to be around and, and help mold me and, and help shape me and to be the, be the person I am today I wouldn't trade it for the world but that that was my first day. It was not like <laughs> it was not like a buddy buddy. We all friends and stuff like that. I walked into like a race riot. It was, <laughs> it was a, like a prison situation, man. It was, get down or lay down. It was a tough one. But that's my story. First day in, and I'm out.